Welcome down to the auditorium floor. I'm Tim Throckmorton, joined by Mike Hale and Tom Winston for this Class C state final. Tom, Callis coming in here with a perfect record, and they've just uh, breezed through another season. What a great year for them. Oh, certainly. Uh, they're not satisfied yet. As one of the signs says, the 21, they don't want one more to go. And talking brief with the coach, Bob McShane, he said there are a couple of real keys. So, number one, they need to get off to a positive start, which they have yet to do. And number two, they really have to rebound a lot better than what they have so far. Erskine Academy also undefeated Tom and Mike Erskine coming in after a, a great season. They've got to feel nice to be here because they've never been here before. Yes, and uh, they come in really uh, strongly manned. They can go deep into the bench, and they're even stronger and deeper this year. A couple of transfer students, Tim, and uh, Kanoyer, and also Neto on the team now. So two undefeated teams. You can't ask for more in the state championship game. Both coming from Coney. We'll be back to the Bangor Auditorium to talk to the coaches and see some of the players right after this. Welcome back to the Bangor Auditorium floor. Callis and Erskine, it's got to be a great one because both of these teams are undefeated. First, let's talk to Erskine coach Bob Doner. Bob, you're coming in here with a, a perfect record. Is this, uh, this has got to be a lot of fun for you. Well, I think Bob said it best the other day in the papers. Uh, it's one of us is going to have a fairy tale ending to our, to our season. And uh, we respect Callis. We had an opportunity to scrimmage them early in the season, and uh, they're an outstanding ball club, and we know we're in for a great, great game. That game was very close in the preseason. What did you learn from them in that game? I learned that uh, neither team can play very well after only two days' practice. Uh, I don't know what really anyone can get out of that. Uh, it was so early in the season. It was only a couple of practices. Bob, tell us about some of your players that we'll have to watch. Uh, Margot Bailey is our center. Uh, Margot is our leading scorer and our leading rebounder, averaging around 14 and a half points a game. Our other, our big forward, if you will, is Val Brand. Val uh, is, um, is uh, about uh, six foot, uh, quick for her size. Uh, our second leading scorer, our other forward position, is Anna Neto. Uh, Anna's averaging about 13 and a half points a game. Um, our point guard is Tara Bickford. Tara is kind of the one who does our dirty work, uh, plays the other team's best offensive player uh, on the perimeter. And our, our other guard who starts is Heather Bumps, our senior. Our leader, she's just played better and better as our tournament's gone on. As far as coming off the bench, a little dynamo, uh, Sarah Kanoya, who stands all of about 4 feet 11. She gets us going, gives us some offensive punches, some great ball handling. And uh, also Jen Adams, who, t uh, who will spell uh, our, our big people. Bob, best of luck tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll turn to Callis now. Bob McShane, a fairy tale ending we were just talking about. This has got to be a, a perfect place for you to be undefeated in the state game. Well, we're glad we're playing in Bangor this year. And, uh, and uh, it's been a great season. We've uh, won all our games. We've had a lot of fun and the minimum of problems a basketball team can have. And it's, uh, it's too bad it has to come to an end tonight, but uh, it's been a great season for us. You're talking two years ago about just the fact of being happy to be here. This is, uh, this is almost, uh, you almost want to win this one a little bit more. Well, I, I, don't, I think in the back of our minds, we may have been happy to be here. This year, Eastern Maine was a stepping stone in order to get, to get here. So we're going to try our hardest tonight. Bob, tell us about some of your players. Tracy Mulholland's our center. She was uh, a big girl for us in the Eastern Maine tournament, our go-to player. Uh, we have Holly, uh, Andrea Leishman's our power forward. She's going to have to do a good job tonight against a six-footer. We've got Holly Bell's our two-guard. She likes to shoot from outside. She's a tough defensive player. Andrea Gibson's our point guard. She can penetrate and dish off. She can shoot from the outside, and she's a tough defensive player. Jessica Clark's... Uh, Just plays steady, steady player. Coming off the bench, we have Kelly Dow, who's a freshman. She's been improving all year. Um, she can, uh, she's got a good perimeter shot, but tonight we'll have to have her inside because we don't have our power forward, Janice McCombie. And Amy Murray has stepped up and is playing more minutes, and uh, she's a three-player force or a four-player and can do, can do the defense as well as get the key basket. Bob, best of luck tonight and have some fun. Thank you. Bob McShane of uh, Callis Blue Devils, and we've got a great matchup. Number ones from the East and West. That game's coming right up. Hello, everyone. Mike Hale and Tom Winston with you. We're ready to bring you a battle of the undefeateds here. And one of these teams will, will, uh, will taste defeat for the first time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have our national anthem.
And we'd like to congratulate the Central Girls of East Corinth on being awarded the Good Sportsmanship Award just prior to our national anthem. Two officials out on the floor, Tom. Rocky Buck from uh, the Waterville area, Central Main Board, and Kyle Webb here from Eastern Main Board of the Blue Basketball Officials in the Bangor area. I tell you, this should be an interesting one. Erskine. 21 and 0, Cal is 21 and 0. Something's got to give, as Mike said. Both teams coming out on the floor. Kyle Webb, referee tonight, ready to start this one. Both teams excited. It's going to be Tracy Mulholland, yeah, jumping Tracy, against yeah. Margot Bailey, and with the play-by-play -play of this state Class C girls championship, Mike Hale. Thank you, Tom. Mulholland is a 5'11 senior, and Margot Bailey is a six-foot sophomore. Callis in the white gets the tap, and it's Holly Bell with the basketball. Quickly over to Andrea Leishman. As Callis looks over the uh, Erskine defense here early on. And Holly Bell penetrating, but it's an air ball. Somebody might have got a hand on that. And now the Erskine Eagles will get their first possession. Tara Bickford in the uh, front court to the foul line. Over to Neto, and then down low, the shot is missed by Bailey. And the foul will be called underneath there. Uh, knocked out of bounds, actually. I guess Leishman got a hand on it. And Bickford will put it in bounds for the Eagles underneath their basket. Down low to Brand, missing the shot. Her follow-up is no good, too, but she's in a lot of traffic under there. Back out, it's Bumps on the left side. Heather Bumps. In the paint, in and out for Bailey, and somebody has saran wrap, I guess, over the rim on that end to start this one. On the breakaway, easy layup for Callis is Tracy Mulholland. I tell you, a nice job that time by both Leishman and Gibson to get the ball into Mulholland's hands and get the easy two. First basket of the game, and the rebound pulled down by Leishman of Callis. Now Holly Bell. Setting up the offense on the right to Leishman. Both teams play a real tough defense. Callis will look to get off to a better start than they have in some of the games. The three-pointer missed by Holly Bell. And it's Margot Bailey of Erskine on the rebound. Then it's knocked out of bounds by Jessica Clark of Callis. It's a full-court pressure now here, Tom, by the Blue Devils. Full-court man-to-man pressure by the Lady Blue Devils of Callis. And it's Bailey. Off to Bickford. Bickford to the top of the key. Oh, she splits the defense down the middle, and uh, Callis just parted and let her go. Bickford with a layup ties it up at two. Now zone trap pressure by Erskine. Broken easily by Callis. Clark brings it out front. Three-pointer is short by Gibson, and it's saved in bounds by bumps of Erskine. And her teammate Tara Bickford brings it up. 5.55 to go first quarter, tied at two. Callis and Erskine scrimmaged earlier in the year, but really can't count anything like that because both coaches are agreeing to work on different defensive sets for each other. Bumps over on the far side. Now it's Val Brand. She gets it down to Neto posting up, and Neto will draw the foul. And what a big boost for the Eagles to get uh, Ann Neto uh, transferring over from Coney this year. Now all Vanna's experience in the tournament, especially here at the Bangor Auditorium. No question. She's a quality basketball player. And the thing that she did there is she posted up very hard, and they did a nice job of getting the ball inside to her, and she's rewarded with a couple of foul shots. That foul going against Holly Bell, and that's the first foul of the game. 5.30 to go, first quarter, tied at two. Anna Neto. Her, we'll call her as being an excellent foul shooter, watching her play at Coney. Anna, 5'8", senior. Takes her time, comes up a bit short on the second one, and Callis on the rebound. Mulholland came up with it. On the outlet to Gibson, and... Gibson, who will usually lead the team in scoring, will try to have the ball much of the time. Keeps that outside game going while Mulholland will do it for him down low. Gibson on the far side. And in 
the lane. The foul on Erskine. Looks like that foul is going to be on Bickford on the help defense. What they're doing inside, Erskine is trying to double team the post area with some good weak side help from the backside of the uh, Mulholland girl, and they're doing a good job of that right now. And Leishman will put it in bounds for Callis into Holly Bell. Out front, it's Gibson back to Bell. Five minutes to go, first quarter. It's a 3 2 lead for Erskine over Callis. Callis brings it out. It draws that Erskine defense out as well. Gibson along the baseline hits it. Andrea Gibson, the 5 5 senior. Erskine doesn't want her to get warmed up because she can do that consistently along either baseline. And uh, Callis leads 4 3. Four and a half minutes to go in the first. Behind the back dribble by number 24, Bigford. Off to bumps, number 22. Her foul line shot a little bit too hard, and the rebound, Jessica Clark for Callis on the outlet to Holly Bell. Bell, scrappy 5'7 senior, brings it up, and she's going to be fouled by Anna Neto. So far, the uh, Blue Devils are doing a good job at one of the things that Coach Bob McShane said was a key to this ballgame, and that's the rebounding basically for Erskine it's been one shot now that's the first on Neto the uh, second team foul on Erskine so we hit the 415 mark here in the first quarter Andrea Gibson trying to set things up goes over to Bell on the left cross court to Leishman Leishman is open and around the rim and off the rebound Margo Bailey for Erskine off to Bickford who brings it up There's a long shot from the left side, and it's way short for Heather Bumps. And then out of bounds. Callis ball in the corner. That's Leishman putting it in. She's a 5'9 senior. More full court pressure by Erskine. He's trying to deny the ball in. They've been very successful with their press this season. Obviously, 21 and 0. That's Bell dribbling through, and Gibson gets open underneath. Nice and back Andrea door cut. Gibson, number 32 in the white. And it's 6-3, Callis. Three and a half minutes to go first quarter. Penetrating the baseline and drawing the foul was Bell Brand, number 13. Foul's going to be on Mulholland. Be her, <coughs> excuse me, her first, and the team second person. Each team with two now. Substitution now coming in is uh, Sarah Kenoyer for Erskine. Another transfer student from Coney along with Anna Neto. Kenoyer is a 5'3 junior. She's not very big, but she's real quick. She replaces Tara Bickford, a 5'5 junior. And uh, Val Bran is on the foul line. Shooting two for the Erskine Eagles. Center is six feet tall, puts it in the air, and a little bit too hard off the back of the rim. We have 3.31 to go here in the first quarter. Callis is leading Erskine 6-3. Brand spins the ball and uh, hit the same spot as last time, right off the back of that rim, and Mulholland on the rebound for Callis. Off to Gibson. Guarded by Kenoyer as she brings it up. Now it's Leishman. Down low, cutting through the back door. Clark decided not to take it, tries to pass it away to Bell, and then they lose it out of bounds. As Co Coach Bob McShane, I'm sure, was a little concerned at that one. All she had to do, the Clark girl turns around and she has an open layup. Excellent crowd on hand here at the auditorium. A couple of gold basketballs passed out last night. Two more tonight, two more on Saturday. Behind the back, Benoyer. A little spark plug into the paint. Now gives it out to Bumps. Down low, trying to pass it to Bailey, but it's going to be stolen away and then tied up by Mulholland. And the arrow will keep it on the Erskine end of the floor. And Erskine will put it in underneath their basket. Kenoyer, number 11, passes it in on the right side. And it's blocked from behind. Bailey had it blocked. And it's Gibson with it the other way quickly for Callis. Bell out front. Three-pointer. Won't go. And the rebound pulled down by Val Bran of Erskine. And here comes Sarah Kenoyer bringing it up. 2.40 to go first quarter. Callis leading 6-3. Both teams a little cold out of the starting gate in this one as Holly Bell of Callis, number 20, chases it out of bounds. Erskine 
put it in, and Knoyer looking to find someone to put it into. Pretty good deny defense here by Callis into Heather Bumps now. She hands it right back to Knoyer. Guarded by Gibson. Down low, trying to get something going with Neto in the corner. Neto drives baseline, dishes the pass off underneath, and it's blocked as she tried to go up with it. As Brand tried to go up. Now, Kenoyer. Kenoyer, 5-3, just penetrates the defense and challenges the Giants underneath and lays it up and in. Smallest player on the floor. And the defense didn't recover for Erskine. Mulholland had a wide open shot. I think she was a little bit too wide open, and she misses that one. And Erskine will run it the other way. It's Anna Neto with the basketball. A minute 50 to go first quarter. One point lead for Callis. Neto down the middle. And a player control foul on Anna Neto. Okay, you see, last time down offensively, as far as Erskine's concerned, you see the fumble inside. And the foul is going to be called on the inside. Knoyer picks it up this time and drives to the hoop, takes it and lays it in. So the 5-3, smallest player on the floor, knocks it down for two. A lot of confidence to do that move. Challenging the defense, and it's a 6-5 lead for Callis right now as we near the end of the first quarter, a minute 40 to go. Callis with the basketball and a traveling violation. By the way, that player control foul on Neto was her second and the team's third. Callis has two as a team now. Neto takes a seat for a little break. with the ball dangerous pass down low but she got it down there to Brand and Brand on the turnaround it won't fall nice follow on the rebound Bailey misses and then Callis comes away with the rebound and the foul on Callis or rather on Erskine on uh, Val Brand as a matter of fact looks like it'll be Brand's first person number four on Erskine Callis will bring it full length of the court the minute 23 to go in the first quarter and they hold on to a one-point lead, 6-5. Little half-court, three-quarter court, 1-3-1 three court, one, one trap by the Erskine team. Callis gets it across easily. Kelly Dow, the 5'10 freshman in the game, she misses the shot on the baseline. And the rebound's going to be pulled down by Tara Bickford. Gives it off to Kenoyer. Sarah brings it up quickly. Over to Bumps. Bumps. In and out. And the rebound, Mulholland for Callis. Off to Leishman. Under a minute now. 50 seconds remaining first quarter. Not a lot of scoring, but a lot of action. Dow holding the basketball. Tries to pass it in the lane to Murray, and it's stolen away by Erskine. A little two-on-one fast break, and it is Sarah Kenoyer off the pass from Tara Bickford. Kenoyer, number 11. Puts Erskine on top, 7-6. Boy, she covers a lot of area on the floor, Mike. She does. And we're now at 25 seconds here in the first quarter. Andrea Gibson out front for Callis, over to Dow. Back to Gibson. Gibson looking to do something in the lane. Too much traffic. It's off to Mulholland. It won't fall for her underneath, though. The rebound will draw the foul for Callis. Heather Bumps, number 22, in the dark. Picking up the uh, team's fifth foul. That's uh, only uh, her first. But Kelly Dow, the 5'10 freshman, going to the line. And coming into the game, Billy Joe Johnson, number 44, replacing Tracy Mulholland for Callis. Smart move, I think, by Coach McShane, giving uh, Mulholland a little bit of an extra rest here, 10 seconds plus the timeout, plus the foul shots. Kelly Dow, only a freshman, and that says a lot for her to see uh, all the playing time that she will see in the game, and she will be the first and second player off the bench every game. With Danica Greenlaw in there now, too, for Callis. So Kelly Dow made the first one, and the second one is a bit short. Rebound comes away to Val Brand of Erskine with uh, five seconds on the clock. All alone for the easy layup, missing it just before the gun was hit with bumps. And then Bailey misses it at the end of one. We're tied at seven. Welcome back to the Bangor Auditorium as we head into the uh, second quarter of the girls' state 
Class C championship game. Mike Hale and Tom Winston with you. George Hale and Willie Gavitt will be here for our boys matchup. A lot of folks looking forward to that too. Winthrop and Limestone. It's going to be interesting, Mike, to see what both teams do to open things up offensively here. We're tied at seven in this one, Tom, between Callis and Erskine. Low, low scoring start, and it's stolen away by Erskine. The steal by Bumps, but then it's stolen right back by Gibson of Callis. Gibson down the middle. That's a shot that she likes, but that one comes up short. But on the rebound, looks like we had a foul. Is that uh, Billy Joe Johnson, possibly? Number 4 4. She'll pick up her first personal. That's only the third on the team. Early in the second quarter, if you just joined us, as number four, Billy Joe John 44, Billy Joe Johnson heading to the Callis bench. Is it Knauer again? Knauer just challenges the defense and streaks by everybody for another layup. Well, she went right around Andrea Gibson. That's not going to be able to be allowed all night, or it's going to be a, some serious problems for the Blue Devils. She came in off the bench. She has six of the nine points for Erskine at this point. Gibson for three. That's what Callis needed was to get that outside game going a little bit, and they take the lead 10-9, and a foul on the baseline as Val Brand drove to the basket. She was fouled. And that will go against Leishman. Andrea Leishman picking up her first. And that's number four on Callis as a team. And Val Brand of Erskine will be on the foul line. Six foot senior. Good on the first one. And we're tied at 10 with 6.58 to go in the first half. It's a little spin on the ball each time before she puts it up and misses the second one. The rebound Gibson for Callis. And she'll bring it up. Gibson guarded by Knoyer. Now off to Leishman. Leishman looking down low. Gets it on the high post. Now over on the right, it's Gibson with another runner. It's good for two. Hey, watch out if she starts uh, firing those shots with some confidence. She can hit. A lot in a row. She has seven in the game already. And it's 12-10 Callis. Knoyer gets open, but nice recovery by Holly Bell to deflect it away uh, for Callis. And uh, Gibson, who's had the hot hand the past couple times down, has the ball for Callis over to Leishman. 6-10 to go first half, and it's 12-10 Callis. Now this Mulholland up high at the foul line. Off to Leishman on the baseline, and it's there for Andrea Leishman, number 50. 14-10, Callis. Coach McShane wanted to get some scoring from other people, and he's, he's getting it because I don't believe Mulholland scored in the ballgame, has she? Two points. Margo it. Bailey puts it up short. And Kelly Dow came down with the rebound, and now Gibson brings it up for the Callis Blue Devils. Nearly stolen by Erskine, but Holly Bell catches up with it. Now she's going to fire the long one. It's good. It's a two-pointer, though, as Holly Bell's foot was on the line. But nevertheless, that outside game of Callis really opening things up here. The so Blue Devils go up by six with 5.20 to go in the first half. Baseline, number 31, Margot Bailey. Robert Donar looking on from the bench as his team cuts Callis's lead to four. Long up court pass going to be picked off, but then a travel. Brand got it, then she lost the handle on it and dragged her pivot foot. Still a pretty good defensive effort by Val Brand, and, and you see the last couple of times that the, the pressure has bothered Callis just a little bit. Yeah, that broke up a possible uh, easy layup on the fast break, even though she traveled with it after. So a heads up play by Brand. You notice when the players come in, they hand the towel off to the player coming out for uh, Erskine, number 44. Jen Adams, who's done a great job off the bench for Erskine this year, is coming in. She's a 5'7 senior. It's Gibson over to Leishman. She makes the nice fake, and she's going to be fouled on the way to the basket. Heather Bumps. Number 22. That was a good fake outside by Leishman. 
created a situation for herself where the defender had to foul her. That's the sixth team foul on Erskine with uh, now just under five minutes to go in the first half. Callis leads by four as Holly Bell loses the handle on it right in front of the scorer's table. Well, it's tough. Coming in, you play before a large crowd like this, undefeated, puts a lot of pressure on these young ladies. Kanoyer trying to penetrate again. Call for a travel now. She didn't have as much daylight that time. A little better defense interior on the penetration by both Mulholland and Gibson to shut off the penetration that time by Kanoyer. Holly Bell tries to get it down low to Clark, and now out front to Gibson. Gibson will put up an air ball this time. She didn't really set herself as much as on the other shots. Kind of hurried that one. She was open and wanted to get the shot up before anybody could get out there on it. Four-point lead for Callis. Girls Class C state championship game at the Bangor Auditorium. So enjoy the coverage on WABI TV channel 5 and WAGM TV channel 8. Down the middle, the runner will draw the foul. Tara Bickford, number 24, takes it down the middle. She'll uh, go to the line. As Callis picks up their fifth team foul. So the, that foul will be on Holly Bell, her second personal, with 4-10 remaining in the second period of play. Class C state championship girls action from the Bangor Auditorium. 16 to 12. Good ball game. 5-5 five, five junior Tara Bickford is on the foul line. Goes way down deep, bending the legs, but coming up short on the foul shot. I tell you, we saw last night, Mike, for both teams, how, how important uh, foul shots are in the state championship situation. Not just then, in any situation. Did make a big difference in last night's game, for sure. So one out of two for Tara Bickford. And it's a three-point lead for Callis. 4.05 here in the first half. Bell on the baseline. A little bit too hard off the glass. And loose ball picked up by Gibson off to Leishman underneath. And Andrea Leishman, number 50, with the basket. Callis back up by five. 3.50 remaining. And it's stolen away and then chased out of bounds by Jess Clark with Callis. Holly Bell on the shot that last time for Callis. She's going to knock the ball away. Gibson's going to get it to Leishman and off the glass, and she's rewarded with the bucket. Heads up play, looking ahead of the play to see who's open. Long pass. I don't know how they got it down there, but they did. A nice block by Leishman. But then Margot Bailey with a recovery, and she gets the layup. Bailey, only a sophomore. And it's a three point lead for Callis. They're going to call a timeout with 3.34 to go. 18-15, we'll be back in 30 seconds. That would probably be Janice McConvey, number 52, who uh, broke her ankle on the ice during the tournament, I think, before the final game or semifinal game. Yeah, just prior to it. So Janice McConvey looking on. A little frustrated, I'm sure, wanting to be out there so badly. And Callis really could use her as far as uh, not having a great deal of depth. Not as deep as Erskine, anyway. But Callis has one important thing right now. That's a three-point lead. 3.25 to go in the first half. Mulholland, pretty play. I tell you, not only a great, great shot, but a good catch of the ball. She used her body very, very well there. Tracy Mulholland. Makes it a five-point lead for Callis. It's nearly stolen away, and then chased out of bounds by Clark. Clark's doing a nice job defensively, knocking a lot of balls loose and being very active on the defensive end for the Lady Blue Devils. And uh, speaking of that depth, Nikki Willett will come in for Erskine, replacing Tara Bickford. Netto hasn't had the ball a lot, fires it from the baseline. It's no good, and a good rebound by Margot Bailey will draw the foul. Bailey, number 31, will go to the line. Looks like that foul is going to be on Amy Murray. It is, and that's going to be her first. And each team with six now, Tom. We could be in uh, one and one shortly, but they've actually held the fouls down pretty good. There's only 3.04 to go in the half, and we haven't been in the bonus. 
But Margo Bailey will be shooting two for Erskine. And the first one gets on that on the way through. Coach Robert Doner looking on. Second one also makes the sweet sound of the net for Margo Bailey. Three-point lead for Callis. Just under three minutes to go in the half. Leishman out front. Now over to Gibson. Now it's Jess Clark giving it to Mulholland, cutting up to the foul line quickly over to Leishman on the right, and Andrea can do it along the baseline too, and she hits another one. Well, that's six in the second quarter for Andrea Leishman. 22-17, back up to five for Callis. Excellent game here in the first half. Adams out front, gives it off to Bailey. Coming across the middle is Adams, and she'll draw the foul. I believe that's going to be on Mulholland. If that's on Mulholland, that's going to be her second personal foul, and an interesting decision for Coach McShane. With 2.22 remaining in the first half of play, his team up by five. He's looking on and saying, do I or don't I? But right now, he looks like he's going to leave her in there. Or maybe not. Holly Bell's going to check in. Let's see if she checks in for Mulholland. On the foul line, Jen Adams waiting to shoot two. She is going to check in for Mulholland. You can move Dow down low into the rebounding position. I think that's a smart move. You really can't afford to have Mulholland get in foul trouble by picking up her third in the last 222 of this first half. Well, with a five-point lead, you don't want to take any chances at this stage of the game. Adams shooting two misses the first one. I don't think the girls were quite sure if it was one or two. <laughs> Andrea Leishman won't forget that one. Little smile. She <laughs> thought it was one and one. Adams, a senior, has had to fill the gap this year with Tammy Blair out all season with a, I believe it was a knee injury. Blair would normally be a starter. As Leishman gets the rebound anyway. She gets the rebound this time <laughs> off the uh, missed foul shot by Adams, and then a traveling violation on Callis quickly the other way. Jess Clark, number 14. 2.16 to go first half. It's 22-17. Callis, Blue Devils leading the Erskine Eagles. Callis made it to the state championship game year before last, losing to Mount Abram. And Erskine hasn't been there for a while. There's a nice shot up underhand by Anna Neto, number 32. Erskine still going to that inside game. A little more movement that time offensively by the Erskine Eagles created the opportunity for Neto. Gibson, air ball, but Bell is there. She's going to be fouled from behind. Jen Adams, I believe. I'll tell you, Holly Bell bailed Andrea Gibson out that time by being in the right place at the right time. Gibson forced a shot a little bit. Bell happened to be there, and she's going to be on the foul lines. Coach McShane talks to Gibson possibly about, geez, don't force the ball, Andrea. Both teams over the limit now, Tom, with a minute 42 to go in the half, so the bonus may not have a big impact here early in the game. Neto coming out, number 32. Erskine, I believe, 1988. They uh, played in the state game against Skank and lost, so it was 88 for Erskine and the year before last for Callis. Both teams have been right in the thick of it each tournament season, though, as Bell misses the foul shot. She gets the rebound, though, and the three-pointer is an air ball out there. But Kenoyer has it. Goodbye. She misses the layup. Some pretty good pressure by Bell. But the follow-up is good. The Tara Bickford right there to follow it up. And a quick shot missed by Gibson the other way. Dow with the follow. The freshman with a strong rebound. And it's Callis 24, Erskine 21. We have a minute 10 to go in the first half. In the paint, it's going to come up short for Nikki Willett. And out of bounds off Callis. That's right. And uh, we got in there now. Val Brand checking back in, number 13. She'll replace uh, Jen Adams. Last touch by Callis, so Erskine will put it in underneath their basket. They get the pass in there. And the shot is going to be missed by Margot Bailey. Callis with a long upcourt pass is chased down and saved inbounds very nicely. Bickford 
into Knoyer, and Knoyer will bring it up with under a minute now. Knocked loose from behind by Gibson. Loose ball picked up by Holly Bell. She hands it right back to Gibson. She'll bring it up, guarded by Willat. Now to Bell. 40 seconds on the clock here in the first half. Dallas by three. It's Gibson with the ball out front. And guarded by Willat. Now over to Bell. And Leishman, who checked back in a moment ago. Leishman bottled up. And a timeout will be called, and we'll take a quick 30-second timeout. We'll be right back. Now, a coast-to-coast -coast savings event that only comes once a year. Announcing the National Jeep Sale at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. Buy or lease a four-wheel drive Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo with special savings. Get $500 cash back when you buy or lease Wrangler. Buy or lease four-wheel drive Cherokee Sport and get special lease rates and cash back. So hurry in today, because while our vehicles know no limits, our sales do. See your New England Jeep and Eagle dealer now. At the Bangor Auditorium, looking at the Erskine bench for the timeout with 26 seconds to go in the first half. I don't think, Mike, that that's one that Coach McShane and Callis Blue Devils really wanted, but the, the, the Leishman girl was pretty much forced to call that timeout by some pretty good defensive pressure that time by the Erskine Eagles. Yeah, she was facing a five-second call within a second, and she probably, for a moment, forgot how much time there was and didn't want to give up the ball. So Coach, Coach McShane a little frustrated, though, and that's his second timeout. All right, 23 seconds remaining in the first half. Callis by three, they have the ball in the white. Leishman over to Gibson. To Clark, right back out to Gibson. They got it down to 10 seconds now. They'll begin to move it in. Leishman, they want it in Gibson's hand. She's going to dish it off Clark on the baseline, but it's going to be blocked. Clark follows again and out of bounds. The nice block by Stacy Lewis, number 25 for Erskine. And Erskine will try some sort of desperation shot with two seconds to end the first half. See if they can even get it in bounds. There's a long pass going to be touched by Dow of Callis, and they won't get a shot off. And a great first half, and Callis 24, Erskine 21 at halftime of the girls' state class E championship game. We'll be back at halftime after this two-minute break. Welcome back to the Bangor Auditorium floor. And while the Erskine cheerleaders are out on the floor during their halftime routine, we're joined by Mike Chadwick, who is the principal at uh, Callis High School. Mike, you nervous up in the stands there or what? I'm always nervous, Tim. I'll, I'll be nervous till the game's over. And uh, that's just the way I am. This is their first trip to the uh, state finals for the girls. And the boys have done so well over the years with, uh, with Arnie. What does it do for the school, the community, and all that to have them come down here and play in this important game? That's been great. Uh, these girls played in the state game in 1991, also uh, losing to Mount Abram in that game. Uh, it's just been tremendous support from the community and uh, the way the boys in town have handled it and supporting the girls. And uh, girls have really raised the level of uh, ba girls' basketball tremendously. Uh, we've had packed houses for games most of the year. Uh, it really brings the community together. Bob McShane, obviously pretty happy about bringing uh, two teams to a state final in three years. What what goes on there in the summer down there in Callis? We get all these fine golfers, Jim Frost and Lori Frost. We hear about all all the time. Is there anything that goes on down there in the summer besides uh, golf? Uh, well, Jim and Lori play a lot of golf in the summer, and the courses uh, are empty because most of the kids are inside playing basketball. And uh, Bob uh, has the girls in there two nights a week, and uh, has a large turnout uh, most nights. Uh, and the girls just play basketball, 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 and it looks this way all the way down through the program. There's some real, real good athletes coming as well. The school gives them plenty of time in the summer to get into the gym and play. Uh, well, we figure the gym is part of the community, and it was built to be used, and uh, we'll, we'll use it for a week to clean it up and do the floor over, and after that, it's open for the community. Mike, thanks for joining us down here. Yeah. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you. Mike Chadwick, principal of uh, the Callis Blue Devils. Now we'll be back to the auditorium in 90 seconds. <laughs> and welcome back here to the uh, Bangor Auditorium at halftime. Callis with a three-point lead, and uh, look at the halftime scoring. Tom Winston. First of all, for the Erskine Academy Eagles, coming in here undefeated, Val Brand has one point. Tara Bickford has five. Margot Bailey with six. Anna Netto with three, and Sarah Knoyer with six, rounding out their scoring of 21. For the Callis Lady Blue Devils, also coming in undefeated, 
Uh, Holly Bell has two, Andrea Gitson nine, Tracy Mulholland four, Andrea Leishman six, and Kelly Dow three, and their score of 24. It's 24-21 here in favor of the Callis Lady Blue Devils at halftime of Class C State Girls Championship action. 16 minutes away from another gold basketball. If you look at some other halftime stats, Erskine uh, uh, shooting 32% to Callis is 44. The free throw percentage uh, both down, 41 7 for Erskine, 25 for Callis. Uh, turnovers about even at 7 for Erskine, 8 for Callis. Uh, and rebounding is, is pretty even at 18. I guess you can't get any more even than that. And that's something that Callis coach Bob McShane, Mike, said that he really needed to do. And I'm sure that he's going to look to do more here in the second half of rebounding the ball and doing a good job of that. And if you're just joining us, Callis is in the white and Erskine in the dark blue. And Erskine will have possession of the basketball to get the... Uh, Third quarter underway. Close all the way, has been right from the, uh, the opening tap. Mr. Webb will hand the basketball in to uh, Anna Neto, and she'll put it in bounds to Val Brand. Brand looking to go inside, does to Neto. Neto on the baseline is short, and Neto has been uh, defended real well in this game. She's been denied the ball a lot and hasn't had a chance to do much down underneath. Andrea Gibson for Callis with the ball. Now it's Leishman looking down low. Nothing happening. Gives it to Mulholland who has to come up high. Now down to Gibson. Nice move on the baseline, but it won't drop. And on the uh, rebound, a foul is going to be called. It's going to be on Leishman, I believe. And so that will be Leishman's second personal foul. But I like the coaching move, Mike, right there by Bob McShane. Kanoya starts the second half, and he's got Gibson on Kanoya. A little height advantage for Andrea Gibson, and he takes the ball right inside and posts Gibson up against Kanoya. Unfortunately for Callis, she didn't hit the shot that time, but a good coaching move by Bob McShane. Sarah Kanoya, who didn't start the game, but came in off the bench and really was a, a big spark for Erskine to keep him in this game, did start the second half. They go inside to Brand, and she'll get loose and put it high off the glass. Val Brand, number 13. It's a one-point game now. Callis with the lead, and Leishman brings it up for the Blue Devils. And the foul is going to be called against Val Brand, number 13, reaching in on Leishman. Boy, those fouls drive coaches crazy, too. She commits a, a foul about 25, 30 feet away from the basket. You certainly don't need that. Each team has one now. Early in the third quarter, Callis leading 24-23, 32 Gibson with the ball. Now it's Mulholland. Gets it to uh, Bell in the paint. She's double teamed. Gets it out to Clark. Back to Bell. Back to Clark. Out front, Mulholland. And now it's Gibson. Guarded by Kanoyer. Gibson with the runner. Partially blocked. And then Kanoyer might have got a hand on it. Came up short. But now Bell chases it down for Callis. Bell keep it on their end. And Leishman over to Clark. Tap pass intended for Mulholland. Was taken away by Margot Bailey, number 31. And it's saved in bounds by Bell of Callis into number 11, Kanoyer of Erskine. Hot potato out there. Neto will come up high and try to pass it down low. Pass intended for Bailey, was knocked out of bounds by Callis. So both teams trying to go inside. One to their post, normal post player. The other team, Callis, trying to go into one of their guards. And Kanoyer of Erskine looking to put it in bounds underneath her basket. And the handle was lost by Margot Bailey. And Leishman trying to pick it up. She loses the handle on it, too. And now Erskine will try to put it in again, and Kanoyer has it rejected right back out of bounds. So the defense is a ruling right now, not allowing uh, much of anybody to do anything. The pass looped in there, nobody to get it, and it's going to be picked off by Andrea Gibson of Callis. 6.05 to go third quarter. It's a one-point lead, 24-23 for the Callis Blue Devils. They have the ball in Sleeshman right now. Off to Mulholland, she'll take an outside shot and she'll hit it near the foul line. Tracy Mulholland, 5'11 senior. And it's a three-point lead for Callis. Is that her first basket or maybe second? I believe she's got six now. She's, she's got, got six one in, in each game. quarter. She's been pretty quiet, kind of spread it out over the three quarters so far. Neto with a nice move, but it won't drop. And Leishman coming up with a rebound. And now Jessica Clark gives it back to Leishman. I tell you, Mike, Leishman doing an awfully nice job on the boards tonight. Yes, she is. For Coach McShane. Now it's Holly Bell. Pull up jumper off the glass and in. 
I tell you, credit Tracy Mulholland with the nice screen on Neto to free up Holly Bell there. 28-23, that matches uh, Callis' biggest lead in the game back up at five. Heather bumps, dishes off down low where the shot is going to be missed by Val Brand. And the rebound, Callis. Andrea Gibson brings it up. And Jen Adams getting ready to check in for Erskine here in just a moment. Holly Bell with the ball for Callis. 4.50 to go, third quarter. Callis by five. But holding on to that slim lead throughout the entire game. Now it's Leishman near the foul line. Off to Bell on the left. She'll fire up the three-pointer, Holly Bell. Well, they're going to find out, as you can see, the Callis fans excited about Holly Bell's shot. They're going to find out quickly, Mike, you can't leave her that wide open. And a timeout, Callis up by eight with 4.29 to go in the third quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds. I tell you, if there is momentum, this may be a momentum builder for the Lady Blue Devils. Holly Bell on Ananetto and fires the long three, and she was well outside the three-point arc, as you can see, and she knocks it down to give her team a 31-23 lead, Mike, with 4.29 remaining. And that's a, if there is such a thing as momentum and momentum swings, then certainly Callis has grabbed it right now, and Erskine's going to have to do something to get that back. That's the biggest uh, difference in the game, an eight-point lead for Callis now against the Erskine Eagles out of Augusta. Sarah Kanoyer with the basketball for Erskine, and they don't want the momentum to shift to the point where this game gets out of control, so a good timeout. Neto missing it down the middle, and a battle for the basketball will tie it up, and the arrow going the other way. I tell you, you, you got to like what Andrea Leishman's doing tonight. She had the ball, lost control, went to the floor for it. A great job by Andrea Leishman as she takes the ball out of bounds. They take the two leading scorers on the season. Bailey and Neto for Erskine are hardly getting to touch the ball. And they're not scoring, and Erskine is falling back. And it's Bell out front to Leishman. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. Callis by eight and being patient here now, looking for the good shot. Leishman out to Bell. Bell brings it over to Mulholland, who tries to get it down to Leishman. Does! Leishman gets away, misses the shot, follow and misses, and loose ball was picked up and almost went in for Jess Clark. Popped out of there, and then it's lost out by Callis. But they had. Uh, Three high percentage shots right underneath that town. So even though they didn't score, Mike, you've got to like the way they're rebounding right now. They're very aggressive on both ends of the floor. If they keep that up, their chance is going to be excellent of coming out on top on this one. They've had a good third quarter. Callis by eight in the turnover now as Erskine loses the ball out. The Erskine uh, bench looking on with a lot of concern right now. It's still a long way to go. We're in the third quarter. Callis by eight is Gibson. We'll bring it up one-on-one -on -one against Kanoyer. Now off to Dow, down to Clark. Clark tries to give it off to Mulholland, but a foul is going to be called on Erskine. Was it on Neto? And, uh, Anna Neto, I believe, is going to pick up a personal foul. That'll be Neto's third personal with 3-10 remaining in the third period of play of this Class C State Girls Championship action. Her team, the Erskine Eagles, trails by eight, 31-23. Neto's third foul, by the way. Second team foul on Erskine. Callis has one. As Dow puts it in underneath the Callis basketball. Holland, nice move across the lane, but it won't drop. Hot potato in there, and a tie up. It will be Erskine ball. Or rather, uh, oh, that's right, Erskine ball. I forgot which way I was going here. <laughs> I tell you, Jen Adams, a little spark plug. 5'7", senior for the Eagles of Erskine, uh, playing very difficult. She's going to come out of the ballgame right now, but she's uh, playing very, very aggressive defensively. 3.02 to go in the third. Cal is still up by eight. As Sarah Kanoyer brings it up for the Erskine Eagles. Over to Neto. She drives. Baseline. Nice move, but it spins out of there. And the rebound. Mulholland ahead to Gibson. Gibson with a nice move by Kenoyer, and Gibson scores. Made the fake and drove by Kenoyer, and that's not easy to do. Also a nice job by Gibson of protecting uh, the ball by using her body to shield it from Kenoyer. That one won't drop. 
for Bailey of Erskine, and uh, Erskine Eagles is having a hard time to get anything on the scoreboard right now as Callis will lose it out of bounds. It's a 10-point lead for Callis, 33-23. Some concern from both benches. More positive concern from Coach McShane and his staff of coaches as they lead by 10 with a little over two minutes here remaining in period number three. Kenoyer over on the right to Bickford. Bickford tries to go down low to Bailey, but it's stolen away by Mulholland. And she'll bring it up. On the right, Dow in three-point land is short. And on the rebound, the foul. Looks to be on Mulholland of Callis, number 34. It will be on Mulholland. And that'll be her third personal foul. Well, McShane clapping, but a little concerned here as Clark comes to the bench. So Mulholland with three. Each team has two. Minute 55 to go in the third quarter. It's Callis by 10. As the see. Erskine offense has gone quiet here in the third quarter. Underneath, the shot is missed by Margot Bailey, but she is going to be fouled. Kelly Dow, number 12, with a personal. Erskine doing a nice job uh, that time of going right inside to Bailey. She was originally being guarded by Mulholland. Dow came over on the help defense and was called for the personal foul as Mulholland is going to take a rest in favor of Leishman. Probably a smart move here by Coach McShane with 149 remaining in period number three of this Class C State Girls Championship. Gibson came over to the Callis bench to get some instructions from Coach McShane at the same time. Foul shot is missed by Margot Bailey. She's a sophomore. As Erskine starts, a sophomore, a junior, and three seniors. And you have four seniors and a junior for Callis. So both teams losing some key players to uh, graduation as Bailey gets one out of two for Erskine and cuts the Callis lead to nine. And Leishman passes in the front court to Bell. Back to Leishman on the right to Gibson. Leishman. Now it's Bell. Back out front, it's Gibson. A minute and a half to go here in the third quarter. Callis by nine. Clock is on their side, so they're looking for the best shot they can get. Leishman on the baseline. Penetrates. It's good. Well, I'll tell you, she's had a great ball game. Leishman picks up her eighth point of the ball game, in addition to at least that many rebounds. Doing a nice job defensively. Super effort right now by Leishman. And now the biggest lead of the game for Callis as it goes up to 11. A minute to go, third quarter. Underneath, a desperately needed basket by Erskine is Margot Bailey, who averages on the season around 15 points a game and is way short of that right now. Callis did it up court quickly. They have it saved in bounds to Erskine. Amy Murray saved it in to Erskine, and here come the Eagles. Now they'll throw it away over the end line. Right, Leishman takes the ball last time down, goes left, and lays it up and in here for a key basket as far as the Callis Lady Blue Devils are concerned. They lead by nine with 40 seconds remaining. Period number three. And Gibson in the backcourt trying to avoid the double team. Gives it over to Leishman. Up court. Murray. She'll catch up with it. She'll miss the layup, though. And the rebound, Heather Bunks, number 22 in the blue. And uh, that foul will bring out uh, the Maylocks for the coach with 29 seconds to go in the third quarter. A reaching in from behind foul at that. A little frustration there after she missed a bunny. It, was t it wasn't a bunny, really. It was a tough one to control. She tried to control it and shoot it at the same time and unfortunately didn't get it to go in. Amy Murray picked up her second. Callis has four as a team as Neto goes on the baseline. Too far under, she has to dish it off to Brand. Brand has it stripped away underneath. Now it's stolen back. The shot is off the back of the rim by Heather Bumps. Leishman on the rebound for Callis. Fast and furious, two seconds on the clock. And nothing happening way over the backboard at the gun. Callis by nine at the end of the third quarter. We're going to take a 60 second timeout. At the Bangor Auditorium, we see uh, fans always get ready for the games in some unique ways. 
Right. <laughs> and it's a lot of unique hairstyles now that they go with celebrating the tournament. We saw some great stuff in here last night. That traveling violation against Bell. So you've got to look for Erskine to turn up the pressure both in the full court and the half court, which they did that time in the half court, causing the turnover by Bell. And you've got to look for Erskine offensively to go inside. And that one won't go. It's off the back of the rim for Heather Bumps of Erskine. And Callis on the rebound, almost loses it out of bounds. Leishman chases it down. And she's fouled as she passes out of the double team. An Erskine foul and not a one and one situation, so. Callis will put it in bounds right where Erskine is standing. Oh, or rather, right it. where, uh, pardon me, <laughs> Leishman is standing. Tracy Mulholland coming back into the game, replacing Amy Murray, who just went to the bench. Heather Bumps picks up her third personal foul. Full court pressure as Callis works their way through it. It's Gibson with a runner on the baseline. He's short. Mulholland with a strong rebound. It won't go. And Dow hangs it on the rim. And then a foul, but again, three shots on the basket for Callis. And an Erskine foul. Heather Bumps. Going to be four on her, and each team with four now. And that will bring into the game Margot Bailey back in for Heather Bumps. 22, Heather Bumps going to the bench. Hey, Coach McShane's got to be pleased with freshman Kelly Dow. Callis with the ball underneath their basket. It's Leishman into Dow. Now off to Mulholland. She misses underneath, but Mulholland gets a rebound, spins and misses again. And Erskine on the rebound, pulled out of there by Margot Bailey on the outlet to Anna Neto. Seven minutes to go in the game, and it's nearly stolen away. It is by Gibson, stolen back by Kanoyer, and then Kanoyer stepped out of bounds with it. Good recovery by Kanoyer, because Gibson uh, is headed alone for a layup. That's been a good matchup, Kanoyer and Gibson. Both very quick. 6.50 to go in the game. Callis by nine, Leishman short on that one. Mulholland on the rebound, yes. Tracy Mulholland coming off the bench. She seems uh, really fired up coming in. She sat on the bench for a while. She doesn't like to do that. And it's knocked loose from behind as Val Brand had it taken away. Dow ahead to Bell. Now Mulholland has it out front to Leishman. 6.20 to go in the game. 37-26. Callis in the driver's seat right now. Dow the freshman over to Leishman on the right. Leishman in the lane. Off high off the glass and in. I tell you, <laughs> look at it. She smiles. She knows that one was a... Was a Super basket. And a timeout and a big lead by Callis with 6.04 to go in the game. We'll take a 30 second break and we'll be back at the auditorium. Okay, back here at the Bangor Auditorium. Last possession. Leishman takes a long shot. It's going to be rebounded this time by Mulholland in the, in the turnaround and the putback. Mulholland will knock it down. It was 6.04 remaining in the fourth and what could be the final period of play? Erskine Don't forget, trails coming by up. 13, 39 to 26. Coming up next, the Class C Boys State Championship, the Ramblers from Winthrop and the Eagles of Limestone. What could be a heck of an exciting ball game? I tell you, you look on both sides. I look back from where we are and look across the way back of the press table and. Up to the rafters on both sides. Great crowd for tonight's Class C championships. All right, the timeout's over. The action going now, and it's Erskine and Neto down the middle. Neto missing around the rim and out. And the rebound comes away to Holly Bell. Gives it off to Leishman. Now to Dow in the front court. Over to Gibson. Gibson out front. Brings it left. Now reverses to the right. Off to Leishman. And the foul is going to be called on Bell Brand of Erskine, number 13. Fifth team foul on the Erskine Eagles. It's going to be interesting here, Mike, with a 13-point lead, lead for Callis, 5.37 remaining, whether they really try to work some time off the clock. Heather Bumps back into the game for Erskine. And Adele Tibbetts, who was in there for a brief time, checks back out. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. Callis, 39, Erskine, 26. Mike Hale and Tom Winston with you. George Hale and Willie Gavitt coming in. 
for that limestone Winthrop game next. Down low, Mulholland missing. And the rebound pulled out of there by Heather Bumps. She needs help. Locked out of bounds by Callis. So I tell you, Erskine got away with one because Mulholland was posted up inside, and the Erskine defender on the weak side did not get to help. And luckily for Erskine, Callis Mulholland missed the shot. 5.15 to go in the game, and Erskine needs to get some sort of momentum going. They have not been able to get Neto and Bailey going hardly at all. There's a three-pointer that won't go for Bumps. And Mulholland on the rebound for Callis. She's going to clear it out herself. A little fast break going here. Gives it over on the right. Gibson baseline is short. And Callis is lucky they came up with the ball. They don't need to hurry their shots with the lead they have. Mulholland down to the freshman. Dow will score. And she is fouled. Well, Kelly what a, Dow. What a great job by the freshman, Kelly Dow. Nice rebound, ducks in, gets the basket and the foul, as you can see it here. Makes the ball fake, ducks in inside, lays it up off the glass and in, and she's on the line with a chance to increase the Callis lead to 16. They lead it by 15, 41 26. Only 4.47 to go in the game now as Kelly Dow. Tries to make it a three-point play. And the foul shot is no good, and the rebound comes away to Neto. For Erskine, she's going to bring it up herself. Time begins to be a big factor here for the Erskine Eagles. Bailey down low, missing the shot, and a foul on the rebound against Tracy Mulholland of Callis. I believe that's going to be Mulholland's fourth personal. <laughs> Could that be the limestone eagle? <laughs> we have an eagle in tennis shoes. <laughs> eagle in tennis shoes. <laughs> Great play that time on the steal by Mulholland, who stepped in front of Neto, and now it's stolen back by Heather, Erskine. Heather bumps on the steal down to Kanoyer underneath the basket. She misses. Tapped out there to Bailey. She's got it. Margot Bailey. Much needed basket by Erskine. Sometimes even the Eagles go for comfort. Erskine Eagle, and now it's Leishman out front over to Bell on the left. As we hit the four minute mark to go in this game. Dow, down the middle, Gibson penetrates but misses. And the rebound pulled out by Margo Bailey. Off to bumps, now over to Kanoyer. Kanoyer brings it up. 3.45 to go, Kanoyer. Looking to pass it down low to Bumps. It's knocked loose by Leishman, picked up by Gibson. Gibson drives, lays it up and in. Again, she drove by Kanoyer, who tried, went for the steal and missed. And Gibson had the easy layup. 43-28, Callis, three and a half minutes to go in the game. This is for the gold basketball in Class C. Down the middle, Neto to the basket. Something that she normally does a lot and hasn't been able to tonight. Erskine's going to turn up the pressure here a little bit. Looks like they're going to try to do it in the half court, but all alone is Tracy Mulholland underneath. Oh, missing the easy layup, but she recovers nicely, but she didn't have anybody anywhere near her. Well, unfortunately, when you do, when you turn up the pressure like that, you get open baskets. You give up a lot of those. Penoyer with a nice move coast to coast the other way. 45-32. 2.50 to go. Dow with a nice move again. The freshman really coming through for the Callis Blue Devils. 47-32. Erskine wants a timeout. They're down by 15 with 2.38 to go in the game. <laughs> the fans getting into it here at the Bangor Auditorium. And the Eagle. I wonder if that Eagle has a sneaker contract. The Eagle's wondering what, <laughs> what can be done to turn this game around with 2.38 to go. I also think the Eagle uh, has landed, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> the right on cue, that Eagle. <laughs> stealing the show here in the fourth quarter. 2.35 to go in the game. Callis with a big 15-point lead. And Erskine, Erskine's going to turn things up now. Going to go for the three-pointer. It won't go for Heather Bumps. And the rebound. 
picked up by Amy Murray. So Erskine only getting one shot. Dow thought about going baseline again. Probably could have, but thought better of it. Good decision that time by Kelly Dow with her team up 15. And it's Gibson out front. On the right, it's Murray into the corner to Leishman. Out to Murray, now to Gibson. 2.05 to go in the game. Callis denied the state championship back in 1991, losing to Mount Abrams. Looking to bring home the gold basketball this time. Two minutes to go, though. Leishman looking to drive. Does it. Gives it out to Murray. And Erskine is going to be forced into a foul here. Because it's down to a minute 40. They just can't allow him to run this much time off the clock down 15. And, and finally, Kenoyer fouls. Kenoyer. Yeah, that's what, what the girls are working about. for, Tom. It's gold it's basketball. Roger Shaw right in front of the table in the gold basketball. As Kelly Dow, the freshman, comes out with 137 remaining. Callis fans and Callis bench pretty excited about this one. They feel like this one's in the bank. Don't counter Erskine out yet. Not with the three-pointers. They haven't hit many yet, but you never know what can happen. Gibson on the foul line, shooting one and one, misses. Especially when you see that in the rebounding action. Leishman, who's played a wonderful ball game, went over the back. It's going to be a possession foul this time. And Erskine will have it under their own basket. That's only six on uh, Callis, so Erskine will not be in a one and one. So that wasn't that bad of a foul, really. I mean, of course, the coach doesn't want it, but it's not going to hurt you with direct shots. No. Depends on what Erskine can do. But they are facing full court pressure, too, as Callis wants to make him use up some time. Kenoyer way out front, missing the shot. And chased out of bounds by Neto. It'll be Callis' ball. Minute 29 to go. Callis fans have been on their feet. Paul Holland has it stripped away from behind. The loose ball chased out of bounds. Number 42. Nikki Willett in there for Erskine as Coach McShane did I, looking did I on. Did see a smile? No, he wanted to, but he doesn't dare to quite yet. <laughs> All right, it's Kenoyer for Erskine Academy. And the shot is blocked by Leishman. As Stacy Lewis put it up, Leishman just rejected it. And Callis, everything's going their way. Gibson underneath scores. The basket had two players on her, and she is fouled. Boy, all the Callis can smell this one. As you look at Andrea Gibson and, and the Callis fans, I tell you. That's going to do it. With a minute six to go, 49-32. Callis coaching staff and the Callis bench are all getting excited. Gibson 15. with a big game tonight, Tom. But not only point-wise, just directing what she's done for, the, for her team has been... Uh, just outstanding. As Murray comes out of the ball game, Kelly Dow back in. Minute We're six, number one. Minute six to go in the number one chat as Gibson makes it a three-point play. And Erskine has had a great season, but it wasn't there a night at the Bangor Auditorium. But they can be proud of a great season with a this will be their only loss all year long. They work it down low and things just have not been clicking. There's a long three-pointer off the glass. No good by Heather Bumps. And the rebound to Lewis. Puts it out front to Kenoyer. 45 seconds remains in the game. 18-point lead for Callis. Neto hitting it on the right side of the lane. 50 to 34. Callis fans begin the chat. Dow is back in there, and she's driving to the basket again. Drawing the foul. We're going to start to see some substitutions here first. The Erskine people will bring in Jen Adams. And Adele Tibbetts, I believe. And coming out uh, will be Bumps and Anna Neto. Billy Joe Johnson getting ready to check in the ball game for the Blue Devils. I guess she might be coming in for freshman Kelly Dow. Just a fine effort by Kelly Dow. You can hear the fans. Dow will get a, a second standing ovation. Karen Wheelock coming in for Tracy Mulholland. What a great job this year by Tracy Mulholland. They can smell this one now. She gives her coaches the big hug. Thumbs up. We got this one, coach. They almost tasted it in 1991, so they know how close it can be, and now it is theirs. I tell you, I'm sure those 34 seconds, as far as the Callis bench is concerned right now, is uh, can't go off the clock fast enough. 
Gibson shooting one and one makes the foul shot for Callis 51 34 and we see uh, Janice McConvey who played with him all year breaking her ankle hugging Mulholland so although McConvey wasn't here for this one she's been there all season with them and a big part of the reason why they are here and why they're undefeated Gibson making the second one and it's 52 34 Callis with 30 seconds to go coming up Winthrop and Limestone in the boys matchup which should be a, a real uh, offensively powered game Danica Greenlaw is going to come back into the or isn't back into the ball game along with Shandy Butler checking in and also Heather Donovan <laughs> boy I tell you that Andrea Leishman comes out and she's some excited <laughs> as you can see and she deserves it she played a great championship basketball game here super game for Leishman feel bad for the Erskine girls out of Augusta they've had a great year and you have a feeling that they'll be back got a good deep bench a lot of support Erskine's coach looking on not much you can do with this situation super effort by his team this year no question about that and here comes a little spark plug. Andrea Gibson's going to come out of the ball game. Butler will come in and listen to the hand for Andrea Gibson. 20 points in the game. Super job by Gibson. All right, just 25 seconds remaining before Cal is going to officially celebrate here. They have a 20 point lead. Down low, the foul is going to be called on Callis as Stacy, uh, I believe it's Rachel, tried to go on the baseline. She'll go to the foul line. Foul against number 40 of Callis, Karen Wheelock. So all the girls getting a chance to experience the tournament and not only the victory, but the frustration too. Foul shot is good. That's the only sad thing about two teams coming in here 21 and 0. They've both had great seasons, but unfortunately in this case for Erskine, this one's going to be hard to swallow. They know they're a better team than, than what they showed, but you got to give credit too to the Blue Devils of Callis because they played a good second half, especially tonight. Stacy Reichel from the foul line. Hope I got that right. It's R E I T C H E L for Callis. Heather Donovan hits it. Seven seconds to go. Erskine with the ball. The long three pointer just before the gun is no good by Stacy Lewis, and it's all over. Dallas has won the state class C schoolgirl championship in 1993. Boy, as you can see, the coaching staff all in a big hug. Coach McShane, Mulholland, and his staff, and McConvey. Boy, what a special feeling this has got to be for Janice McConvey. You know, wish she could be out there, but certainly glad that uh, she could support her teammates and 